Hi, my name is Ross Nickerson. I'm here at the Florida Folk Festival this weekend. I'm performing, and um, I've been wanting to do some videos. So uh, there's a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and that's on how to play the six-string banjo. Um, my business, uh, we sell a lot of six-string banjos, and I've got some insights I think that will help you if you want to get that banjo sound in your guitar player. There's more that you need to do, or more that you can do, to get that banjo sound with a six string banjo. I've got my five string banjo here, and uh, really the, one of the things that gets that banjo sound are things like slides, and things like um, this, this look here. Kind of a, that's really the banjo sound, and part of the trick to that really is the tuning, as well as of course the technique of the stroke style. So, what I'm going to show you that it could be a bit of a shortcut for you is um, how to do that in the sixth string. So uh, let me just play a little bit of the song Cripple Creek, which is a common Earl Scruggs song that uh, banjo players that play five string learn. And it includes a lot of the Scruggs style techniques that uh, you really need to get that banjo sound. Here we go. to the six string banjo. Now, the six string banjo that I've got here, it's a pretty good one. Um, I can't say I, I, I had it around the house and I, I didn't really do much with the head and the strings are a bit old, but it will work for our purposes, um, what I'm going to show you. So, uh, it, it would be kind of obvious to just, um, say, tune your your guitar to what they call open G tuning, because the banjo is tuned to open G, but the impracticality of that is the chording part of it. So, now what I've done is I've just turned the first string down to D, from E, E to D. So normal guitar tuning would be, and you hit the E right there. Anyways, that note, but instead we have a D on the top. Okay, um, now the reason, I'm doing that is because if you have the D on the top string, you can really um, demonstrate a lot with or get a lot of that banjo sound. So we've got, um, for instance, that Cripple Creek. string basically the top four strings are the same now the key to me or this technique is I mean I can show you a lot more about the banjo licks you could play but that if you tune your first string to D then all the banjo licks that are out there or the songs you can pretty quickly adapt to the to the six string banjo just by avoiding the fifth string and when you do that you just substitute a different string in the picking pattern that again is a little more complicated but let me just cut to the chase of how this is going to work um, so Anyways, uh, what we're doing here is you play the, the lead, and I, I've demonstrated that for you without using the fifth string. These are the chords of the song. It's pretty easy to avoid the first string when you're chording. Most times when you play bar chords, you don't hit the first string anyways. Many chords in the guitar, you don't have to play the first string. So you don't have to completely readapt the way you you chord and play the guitar just to play the banjo. You just gotta kinda compensate for this one string that's different. And then when you go to picking, you can play an awful lot of things that have that real kind of banjo scrub style sound by having that first string at D instead of E. Um, for instance, G, if you just play, keep that string open to G. If you play the C, even if you hit that, it's, I guess that's some kind of a sixth chord or something. A minor, doesn't really sound too bad with an open B. D, you just leave the first, you don't fret the first string. You're doubling the D there, but you know. You can see how it's pretty easy to avoid, and even if you do end up hitting the first string, often, or most often, that tune is at least, that string is at least in tune. 
So um, that's sort of the, the preface behind my six string banjo technique so that you can quickly still play your guitar chords, but when you do go to picking, you can play banjo type licks like <laughs> to exaggerate that a little more if I tune the string back up to E. You can see if I play those banjo licks. I mean, they don't work. They don't work at all really. I mean, you'd have to completely play it different and then you wouldn't really sound like you're playing a banjo at all. I mean, really the idea behind this six string banjo is it's a bit of a shortcut for guitar players. So my shortest cut and recommendation is tuning the first string down. Don't necessarily go all the way to open guitar G tuning because I mean, that could work, but then you get a chord different. You're gonna start playing bar chords to chord and stuff like that. So you can go back and, and do all the things that you can play on a regular six string guitar just by compensating for the E string now being a D string. To me, that makes more sense. If you went to open G tuning, all your fretting positions for the chords would be completely different. But again, uh, for you uh, guitar players out there wanting to play a six string banjo, these are the kind of things that um, you can, uh, you know, readily available with banjo 10. Um, on the banjo, picking patterns are, um, they're based on, like we call them rolls or something like that. But for instance, uh, one of the popular rolls would be uh, forward backward roll. That's just a thumb index middle, thumb, and then middle index thumb middle. When we play it on the five string banjo, we hit the fifth string as we go around, but you can use the exact same pattern. You just, whenever the thumb comes around, it would be on the fifth string on a banjo, you just substitute it and repeat the thumb, say for instance on the third string, or play the fourth string like this. That D note right there could have been a fifth string on a five string banjo. But you can still play the same patterns. I mean, I play, when I play five string banjo, I do an awful lot of stuff where I don't hit the fifth string. But I'm using the same picking pattern. So my point is, um, you know, maybe the fifth string will give you that extra banjo sound, but you don't have one on a banjo, on a six string banjo. So you can keep the patterns the same and much of the left hand and banjo techniques just by substituting the thumb stroke that hits the fifth string for the thumb stroke on a fourth string or a third string and maybe even the second string sometimes. Like instead of a roll on a banjo, might go thumb index, thumb middle. Tractor going by or something there, yeah, but uh, but on the banjo, we might go thumb on the third, index in the second, and then thumb on the fifth string. But we don't have a fifth string, so we're just going to play the fourth string instead. A lot of banjo stuff we can do with that.